Hello and welcome. Today we're going to have a get to the Fair Housing Act. This is something that we've talked about in some previous chapters, and we are going to touch on the Fair Housing Act and the evolution of that. I will guarantee that you as a student in a testing scenario are going to need to know which act brought in which fair housing protected classes. Now, depending on what state you're in, we will talk about it in the state laws down at, near, at the end of this class. Because what we are going to talk about is the Federal Fair Housing Act and the seven protected classes inside of the federal laws. Some states can be more restrictive, like Washington State, but you can't be less restrictive. So we're going to cover the federal laws in this class, in the general body here, and then when we talk about your specific state, we will cover the state classes if they are different. Most of them are not. I'd say 90% of all the states work under the federal seven. Uh, there are a few that have some different ones, all right? So let's get started on today's class. We are going to talk about the fair housing. The fair housing is designed for equal opportunity regardless of your race, color, religion, national origin, sex, familial status, disability, don't worry, we'll get to them. And you, as the real estate agent, better be aware of these federal laws. And like I said, we will touch on the state specific or any local, depending on when we get down near the end of this class and deal with your state laws. The purpose of this law, obviously, is to create an open and unbiased housing market for all to enjoy home ownership. If you violate this law, dude, these people do not play. It could be a criminal act and grounds for disciplinary sanctions against you. So let's see how this plays out. <clears throat> so what you have is the Civil Rights Act of, I lost my mind. <laughs> what you have is the Civil Rights Act of 1866, all right? In the Civil Rights Act of 1866, right after the Civil War, they determined that it is illegal to use a person's race as a determining factor on whether you sell them the house or not. It is the only protected class that we have in 1866. It is the big Mama Luca law. It's the main law that we go back to all the time, all right? the Civil Rights Act of 1866. So then what happens is we move forward in this and we get to this court case in 1896, 30 years later, that is called Plessy versus Ferguson. Plessy versus Ferguson, if you remember, was a lawsuit where a gentleman who was black was sitting in the white uh, rail car and they asked him to move to the back, and he sued on discrimination basis. And this court case was actually pushed all the way to the Supreme Court. And this is 1896. And the Supreme Court ruled that if there were segregated services that were equally maintained that it was not discriminatory in nature. So there could be a white rail car and a black rail car to segregate the races as long as they were still treated equally that in fact was not considered discrimination. 
So basically, Plessy lost this case. As long as you had a white water fountain or a black water fountain, and they were equal in nature, however, you, it was not considered discrimination. Well, we roll along that way right up until 1954, okay? Now, we know that our history has some ugly patches. And unfortunately, this Plessy versus Ferguson rule called separate but equal said it wasn't a violation, but they were never equal, all right? They were never equal. Unfortunately, that is a bad history that we have. So in 1954, there was a gentleman who wanted his daughter to go to this white school in Topeka, Kansas. They claimed that there was a black school and a white school. And under the U.S. Supreme Court of decision in 1896 called Plessy versus Ferguson, it was not discrimination because separate but ex equal existed. So it went all the way to the Supreme Court again. And it was called Brown versus the Board of Education. And he actually won because the Supreme Court at this time said, you know what? It is inherently impossible to have separate anything and them be equal, let alone education. Because the simple fact is you have different teachers. So they can't be equal because one teacher is always going to be different whether they're better or worse. So they integrated the schools back. Basically, they overturned their own decision from like 60 years prior in the Plessy versus Ferguson. So the uh, Brown versus Board of Education actually overturns the Plessy versus Ferguson rule. And there were executive orders that came out that started protecting more things rather than just housing. Protected discrimination against voting rights, against membership in the armed services, and all kinds of stuff like that. Well, then we roll along, and a couple of years later, in 1968, we get into a case where a gentleman by the name of Jones, who wanted to buy a property, who actually was qualified to buy the property, had good credit, had the money and all that. However, Mayer, which was the brokerage representing the seller, said they would not sell it to him because he was black. That sparked a lawsuit. That lawsuit, called Jones versus Mayer, goes all the way up to the Supreme Court again. And the plaintiff, Mr. Jones, had this attorney who stood in front of the Supreme Court and went, hey, Your Honor, you ruled on this almost 100 years ago, saying it was a violation to use a person's race as a motivating factor for the sale of real property. And there are no exceptions. None. And the Supreme Court said, you are absolutely correct. And they created the Civil Rights Act of 1968. The Civil Rights Act of 1968. And what the Supreme Court did was reaffirm race as a protected class. But then they added color, religion, and national origin to that. So what you now have are four protected classes. Race, color, religion, and national origin. That's what the Civil Rights Act of 1968 said. And you will see that section or Title Eight of that Civil Rights Act 
actually will morph into the Fair Housing Act. That Civil Rights Act of 1968 included a lot of protections, employment and other things. But Title VIII, which specifically dealt with the real estate, will morph into or will become the Civil Rights Act or the Fair Housing Act as we know it now. And then down the road, we have the Community and Reinvestment Act. The Community and Reinvestment Act of 1974. Right here, housing and, what did I say? Reinvestment, Housing and Community Development Act. Oh boy, Raymond, uh, scratch that. <laughs> I don't know what, I was doing a whole other law. The Housing, my bad, and Community Act of 1974, which brings in sex. Now, before everybody gets up, all up in arms, this means gender. This means two, male and female. There are some new acts that have been brought in by the government for, you know, orientation and preference and things like that. That is not what this means. Remember, this was 60 years, 40 years ago, all right? Almost 50 years ago. This is not what that meant. This means sex as in male and female. That was the difference. Then we had the uh, act where they actually amended the Fair Housing, the Fair Housing Amendment Act of 1988. So you've got the Fair Housing Amendment Act of 1988, where they add disability and familial status, which is family. So what you see are race, color, religion, national origin, sex, familial status, and disability. Those are the seven protected classes that you are not allowed to take into consideration when determining the uh, sale of real property or the lease of real property, all right? Those are the seven protected classes, race, color, religion, national origin, sex, familial, and disability. Those are the seven federal classes. 80% of all states use this. There are a few states which can add to that. And like I was mentioning, I think Washington State add, adds... Uh, <clears throat> military service. I think they add single parents to that as a protected class.